Top secret Starship? Starship 30 static fire aborted. What happened? The top secret Starship 26 is back in action. Where is it going? Star Factory progress continues. Starliner delayed yet again. And Rocket Lab delays the launch of Neutron. My name is Felix. Welcome to What About It. Let's dive right in. Starship update. Another packed week at Starbase. The launch is getting closer, preparations for Flight 5 are underway, and a plot twist no one was expecting happened. Wanna know more? Follow me. It's been nearly two months since the last Starship launch, which marked a huge step forward from its predecessor. This time, not only did the booster successfully complete the boost back burn, but the ship also reached the main engine cutoff and survived most of the re-entry. All while transmitting stunning high-quality video through Starlink. Now we're on the brink of the fourth flight, which aims to smooth out any remaining rough edges. In an ideal scenario, we'll see the Super Heavy performing an actual splashdown after a simulated landing on a virtual tower. Perhaps we'll even see the in-space Raptor ignition, which was called off during Flight 3. Without it, entering a real orbit would be quite risky. After all, you don't want to lose control of a 50 meter or 165 foot vehicle capable of surviving re-entry. However, Flight 4's greatest challenge will be enduring beyond these stages and hopefully reaching the hard landing in the Indian Ocean. This is why there is so much focus on perfecting the heat tiles. The quicker they can master re-entry, the faster SpaceX can progress to recovering the ship. With each launch costing tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, recovering these vehicles is a priority. Hopefully Flight 4 will mark another massive leap towards this goal. As of now, we seem to be on track for a launch in May, though it looks like it might slip to the end of the month. Unfortunately, aside from SpaceX and NASA's estimate, there is little solid evidence of an exact launch date. We're still waiting for notums, road closures, and most importantly, the conclusion of SpaceX's investigation. And while the lack of updates might seem concerning, with Starship, these things tend to pop up just a week before liftoff. What do you think? Will we see a launch this month or is June a more probable target? Leave your thoughts in the comments. As preparations for the fourth Starship launch continue, SpaceX is already proceeding with the test campaign for the fifth iteration. Following the recent rollout of Ship 30, we were expecting to see a sequence of tests, starting with a spin prime followed by two static fires. True to the road closures on May 7th, a portion of Highway 4 was shut down by the Sheriff. The launch site was then cleared of all personnel to ensure safety during testing. As was the case a few times before, the first thing we saw that day was a quick test of the orbital tank farm. Then the suborbital farm spun up and by 11 a.m. Texas time, propellant began flowing into Ship 30's LOX tank. Yes! This step is easy to identify, because the Starship is made from bare stainless steel with no insulation, a frost line forms on its tanks during prop load. However, just a few minutes into fueling, the process abruptly ended and an hour later the frost line was gone. Well, that definitely wasn't a static fire. Later that day, the orbital tank farm cranked up its activity once again, this time showing massive venting from the tower itself. Around 3 p.m. SpaceX was ready for another attempt and frost once again covered Ship 30. This time it was looking promising. We even reached the engine chill phase, which usually occurs about 30 minutes before ignition. This is when a small amount of liquid oxygen is flowing through the engines, gradually bringing their temperature down. Chilling down the engines is way more important than you may think. Without it, the sudden introduction of propellant could shock the Raptor's components, potentially causing them to crack. Furthermore, cryogenic fuel coming into contact with an engine at ambient temperature could boil and create gas bubbles, posing a risk of engine explosion. Bubbles aren't always fun. As we were all gearing up for a potential fire, or at very least a spin prime test, with less than 15 minutes to go, Starship's vents opened and the vehicle was detanked. This unfortunately meant that we wouldn't see any more testing that day. It looked very much like an aborted spin prime or a static fire test, but it's hard to say for sure. During the last test campaign for Ship 29, we witnessed a similar scenario. Everyone was expecting a spin prime, but instead we saw a fuel load followed by an engine chill and then a detank. So it's possible that this could be part of a new testing protocol. 
Who knows, maybe cryogenic tests are making a comeback? On the other hand, an overpressure notice was issued to the residents of Boca Chica village for that day, so at least they knew that they tanked the ship with methane and oxygen. Regardless, even if it was a failed test, there is no need to panic. SpaceX had backup closure dates set for May 8th and 9th, so by the time you're watching this, it is very likely that Ship 30 has already completed at least a spin prime, if not a full static file. We'll as always show the footage here if it did happen. While tracking Ship 30's progress is exciting, it may not be the only prototype to undergo a static fire this month. But before I tell you more, let's hear a word about food. I am a chronic snacker, the type of person that goes to bed with a bowl full of cereal. So when Magic Spoon reached out to sponsor us, I knew I was in for a treat. Wholesome and sugar-free, Magic Spoon has reinvented cereal for adult diets without artificial flavors or dyes. It is perfect for various diets, is high in protein, keto-friendly and free of gluten, soy, wheat and grain. Ideal for a low-carb lifestyle. My family and I get to enjoy the same great tastes we love with zero sugar and up to 14 grams of protein per serving. Click the link below to build your own personalized Magic Spoon box with all the flavors you love plus $5 discount using the code FELIX. Explore a range of delectable flavors including fruity, my personal favorite, frosted along with peanut butter, honey nut, cinnamon roll, chocolate chip cookie, birthday cake and the top selling cocoa. With such diverse options there is bound to be one to suit your taste. Don't forget you can also come Complement your order with any of their scrumptious cereal treats. And if you don't like it, no problem. With their 100% happiness guarantee, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below to build your own Magic Spoon box with all the flavors and treats you love, plus $5 discount using the code FELIX. Also, for my Canadian and British fans, Magic Spoon ships to Canada and the UK. Yum! Okay, belly filled, let's head over to the production site. Here at the Rocket Garden, SpaceX stores prototypes either awaiting their turn or destined to be scrapped. Among them, one prototype clearly stands out. Yes, I am talking about Ship 26. This particular prototype has been the subject of much speculation back when it left the high bay. It, along with Ship 27, represented a departure from the standard Starship design. Both prototypes lacked aft and forward flaps as well as the heat shield. One notable difference between Ship 26 and 27 was the absence of a payload bay in the former. SpaceX never disclosed the intended purpose of these prototypes. There was speculation that perhaps they were expandable versions of Starship, designed to minimize costs and mass to start launching Starlink's ASAP. However, this clearly wasn't its purpose, the top secret Starship. Others speculated that these prototypes were linked to NASA's human landing system. Initially, there was hope that ships 26 and 27 would serve as test articles for in-orbit propellant transfer. This theory, however, got crushed the moment ship 27 was cut in half and scrapped. Another theory said that ship 26 might eventually serve as a mock-up for the lunar lander itself. Some even suggested that its nose cone could be removed and replaced with the HLS mock-up, one of SpaceX's weirdest prototypes. Things got really exciting back in February 2023 when the prototype was unexpectedly moved to the launch site for a series of cryogenic tests. That was more than a year ago. Surprisingly, it later received a set of engines and was moved again, this time to suborbital pad B. Dude. There, it underwent another cryogenic proof, followed by a pre-burner test. Finally, on October 20th, Ship 26 fired one of its engines, simulating an in-orbit engine ignition. All this activity hinted that, in the end, it might be related to the HLS program. But then the prototype was moved back to the rocket garden, where things took an interesting turn. It started receiving a lot of attention from workers, worrying us that it was about to be scrapped. But thankfully, that wasn't the case either. Instead, it began sporadically receiving stringers. Sporadically. Still, no explanation was given as to what exactly all of this means. Now here comes the latest weird twist. On May 5th, something unexpected happened. The prototype began to move. Two SPM transporters carried it to the last place anyone expected, Mega Bay 2. Initially, it seemed like this might be the end for Ship 26. The most plausible reason for its relocation appeared to be the removal of its engines in preparation for scrapping. As such, the prototype was placed on the middle workstand and then it wasn't scrapped. 
What? Instead, on the night of May 7th, the ship's static fire stand was seen rolling down Highway 4, traveling from Massey's to the production site, before entering this second mega bay. After several hours of preparation, Ship 26 was attached to a crane, which then hoisted it atop the static fire stand. And just like that, Ship 26, one of SpaceX's most enigmatic prototypes, was off to Massey's, as captured by our photographers. It'll be interesting to see what will happen next. Clearly, they wouldn't have moved it if there were no plans for it. This could range from just seeing how the test stand behaves when moving it with the prototype on top, to seeing the quick disconnect panel hooked up to the vehicle. Testing possibilities for Ship 26 are broad, with a cryogenic proof certainly on the table. In an ideal scenario, Ship 26 might even become the first to perform a full-blown static fire at Massey's. This would be quite a feat, considering the flame deflector was only installed less than two weeks ago. However, it's also possible that testing might not reach such an extensive level, as it's still uncertain whether special permits are needed to fire engines at this new location. Once the Massey stand is operational, the rate at which prototypes are tested is expected to skyrocket. Pun intended. Essentially, it's a mass test facility for a mass-produced Starship. SpaceX would no longer need to close Highway 4 every time they want to fire Raptors. More crucially, it would free up space at the current site to dismantle the suborbital tank farm and construct a new tower. If Ship 26 will indeed end up conducting a static fire at Massey's, the days of the suborbital launch site will be numbered. For us spaceflight fans, the shift to Massey's isn't the best possible outcome. It's a location that's more challenging to monitor 24-7, though we are working on something. Now, before we continue with the news, we've looked into our channel metrics, and there are over 2 million returning monthly viewers who have not subscribed yet. Help us improve the channel even further by double-checking that you've hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our updates. And while you're at it, give us a like and become a Y supporter for exclusive SpaceX updates. With it, you get access to daily Starbase photo galleries, including satellite, aerial, and ground photos of SpaceX's progress, and countless other extras on top. No matter how much you decide to give, everyone gets the same supporter content and access. You decide what you want to give. And just as a reminder, on April 19th, we launched Y Live. We have cameras at Starbase and Port Canaveral. You may have seen snippets from these cameras before, but now you can watch them 24-7. And not just that, we livestream heli flights and show pictures, launches, tests and interviews. It is packed, thanks for watching. Okay, back to the production site. While the new test stand at Messi's will help streamline Starship testing, the production of the prototypes is also expected to ramp up soon. All thanks to Star Factory, which at least externally looks almost finished. Over the past few weeks, workers have been busy installing glass windows along the facade, and it's starting to look pretty. Just the top row of windows remains along with what looks to be some curved glass for the front corner. Aside from a bit of cladding that still needs to be added, a task that should be quick and easy, the exterior is nearly done. Of course, the real magic is happening inside, where unfortunately we can sneak a peek. I imagine that much of the tooling inside is already operational. Progress is also very swift at the back of the factory, where an office mezzanine is quickly taking shape. From the looks of it, it appears to be already five levels tall in one section, which should be the final height of the building. Although the official completion date for this project is set for January 1st of 2025, it looks like they'll wrap up much sooner than that. This area just asks for a Raptor engine or for a Starhopper in the middle. On the other side, behind the base, SpaceX's engineers are making rapid progress on the construction of the parking garage. After reinforcing the ground with piles, the construction kicked off with what seemed like prefabricated concrete slabs. It is almost like watching someone play with giant Lego blocks. In less than two weeks, we've gone from no parking to four out of the planned six tiers being completed. The structure is scheduled to be finished by July 1st, and they are well on track to hit that target. I have to say, Starbase is quickly evolving into a professional high-tech facility, a far cry from the early days when prototypes were assembled out in the open. It is also a sign that SpaceX has a long road ahead, with countless developments to come out of the ever-growing Starbase. Do you prefer this new polished Starbase, or do you find yourself nostalgically missing the days of the flying water towers? Please let me know in the comments. Alright, switching gears from SpaceX, let's talk about Boeing's Starliner. 
The last time we covered this, I mentioned that just because the rocket and capsule are waiting on the launch pad doesn't guarantee a smooth launch. So about that, you guessed it, the first crew test flight of Starliner faced yet another delay. After many months of preparations and resolving the issues from previous tests, Starliner was integrated with its Atlas V launcher and rolled out to Slick 41 on May 4th. The countdown was progressing smoothly and on May 6th, three hours before the scheduled launch, the crew for this mission arrived at the pad. NASA had selected two highly experienced astronauts for Starliner's crewed debut, Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams. Butch and Suni went up ULA's launch tower and entered the capsule decked out in Boeing's sleek blue flight suits. So far so good. The support team then made sure they were comfortable and safe and just as they were about to seal the capsule's door around T-2 hours, the launch was abruptly scrubbed. So what went wrong this time? Was it an issue with the parachutes or the valves again? Well, it actually was a valve, but not on the Starliner itself. From what we know, the capsule was in good shape, showing no signs of the issues that had popped up in previous tests. However, a self-regulating valve on the Centaur upper stage was not functioning properly. The Centaur LOX relief valve was chattering, which is an engineering term for it toggling between open and closed. In other engineering terms, that's what's called a parameter outside of limits. While a valve issue might not pose a significant concern on an uncrewed flight, the stakes are much higher when astronauts are involved. Initially, there was hope that the launch could be rescheduled from May 10th. However, upon further analysis, it was decided that the Atlas V needs to be rolled back to the vertical integration facility for a valve replacement. As such, the new launch window opens on, drumroll, May 17th. It is disappointing to see another delay, but safety must always come first, especially since this marks not only Boeing's, but also ULA's first crewed launch ever. We are all hoping for a successful launch this time around. And no, we are not being sponsored by Boeing to say that, or are we? Lastly, let's talk about Rocket Lab's giant info dump on what their future holds. They recently released another quarterly investor update, and as always, there is a lot of interesting stuff to unpack. This year alone, Rocket Lab has already executed five missions. The most recent one involved deploying a solar sail for NASA and a satellite for another company, which we discussed a few episodes ago. This mission was particularly significant for Rocket Lab as it marked only the second time their kickstage deployed satellites at two different apogees. Additionally, after releasing its payload, the kickstage executed a retrograde burn to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, helping to mitigate space debris. This is something usually only SpaceX does, so it is great to see other companies care about the growing space debris problem. In the second quarter of this year, Rocket Lab has three more missions scheduled. Two of these are consecutive NASA launches deploying satellites known as Prefire. The satellites need to work in tandem, so they must be placed in orbit within three weeks of each other. They pulled it off last time, it will be interesting to see if Rocket Lab can meet this tight schedule again. Technically, Rocket Lab aims for 22 electron launches this year, but customer delays usually make it almost impossible to actually achieve that goal. Still, we're expecting a significant increase from the 10 launches achieved in 2023. However, what really caught our attention during the presentation was the update on the Neutron rocket. Rocket Lab's next-gen, almost fully reusable Wonder rocket. Rocket Lab showcased a fully assembled Archimedes engine, nine of which will power Neutron's first stage. It may look a bit cluttered, but remember that this is just a test engine with tons of sensors. SpaceX's Raptor also looked similar in the beginning. Over the coming weeks, the Archimedes engine will undergo extensive testing, including ignition tests and both short and long duration static fires. Rocket Lab also showed off some parts of the rocket's body itself. The first panels for the fairing have been completed and the Stage 2 tank is ready for final assembly and integration. The components necessary for assembling the first tank are also partially finished. Earlier this year, Rocket Lab was confident that they could launch Neutron by the end of 2024. Back then, I said there was no way that they would be able to assemble the whole rocket, test it and build the launch site in just a few months. Unfortunately, it looks like I was correct. The launch has now been officially rescheduled for mid-2025, assuming no further delays. 
Two optimistic timelines are pretty common in the space industry. That's it for today. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe for more awesome content. This is what fuels the algorithm and helps us immensely. Check out our epic shirts in your favorite Space Nerd store. A link is in the description. And if you want to train your space IQ even further, watch this video next to continue your journey. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next episode. In an, ide in an ideal... Uh, belly filled? <laughs> Maybe I should suck it in before doing that. Sorry, my voice jumped. Who <laughs> fooled by?